Hi, my name is Jim Truscott and welcome to the very latest version of XBRL Sheet. This version is different to the previous version in that it works off a database. So instead of the filings being processed in real time, they have been processed at the point at which they have hit the SEC website. And so we can potentially do lots more interesting things with the data. For example, we've come in on the search uh, tab and I think that sort of gives a clue as the kind of things we'll be able to do. We'll be able to screen for particular companies using all the information which is available from the SEC XBRL database. So uh, yeah, hopefully um, you're going to be able to do more and more with this particular version. With this version we're starting off fairly slowly. We've just introduced one uh, significant change in terms of the data but we have started to change the way it works to reflect um, all the things that are going to be added in the next few months. Oh, before we go any further, we need to make sure we've got an up-to-date token to put in here. We can get a valid token from the xbrlxl.com website. Just log in or register and up will, up will pop a valid token next to your login details, which you can then copy and paste across, which is exactly what I'm going to do here already copied it so I've just got to paste it into this particular box. Now if you uh, if you don't do that then what's going to happen um, if your token is zero is you're going to get the latest 10k for Microsoft over and over again every time you try and download something. Which is great if you're a big Microsoft fan, nothing better. But um, if you want to look at companies other than Microsoft, then you do need to get yourself uh, an up-to-date token, which is what we have got here. Now, we shall move on to downloading a company, and I'm going to download it as uh, Filing2 for this particular exercise. And I thought, seeing we've just been talking about Microsoft, that we could actually have a look at uh, the latest 10K for Microsoft. So I'm just going to insert the uh, ticker here and if we make sure that the filing type is 4 for 10k or we can change it to 1 if we want a 10q but we'll leave it as a 10k and we can uh, specify the period either here or here. So any box basically which has got a, a, a background greyish type colour you can insert, uh, well actually you don't insert anything in it, um, it means that these uh, cells are automatically calculated so um, uh, dates can be either placed here or here but we'll come on to that in uh, a little bit later in a little bit more detail. So now we have everything we need to download the data so if we go to the download sheet for filing 2 which we can do via this handy shortcut here and then we click on the data area and right click and actually right click and click refresh and the data will download but as the eagle eyed amongst you has probably noticed we've already done that so we don't need to do that uh, I did that to save us a little bit of time here now what you may notice is that we have a new column, which is the standard tag column. So we now have two tags for every single data item. We have the tag that the company has used, in this case sales revenue net, and we have an additional tag column that we have added to show what the tag is at a more generic level. Generic level. Uh, in this case, it is is revenues. So the purpose of this extra column is essentially to do some of the work that we were doing in the standard sheet previously. Um, this is where essentially um, we prepare the data ready to be modelled. Now I still think you need this sheet, I think this is an, an important layer between essentially the raw data and the model itself. But this sheet could have become extremely complicated without this extra column that we have now added. So let's go back to filing two to see what I mean. So I'm going to come back to this line again, the first line for Microsoft. And if you look at the revenue figure, you will see that the company has described it as revenue. That's what you would see if you looked at the paper 10K. 
But in their XBRRL, they've been much more specific in describing it. They said, well, actually, it applies to sales or revenue, which is perfectly fine. The problem is, is if you then want to compare Microsoft against another company that perhaps has described it more generically or more specifically as their type of revenue, finance revenue, maybe whatever they've chosen to do, you've got a problem um, because they're using two different standard tags. So what we've done is said, well, OK, let's give you a choice. You can either look at it at a generic level, which is what the standard tag is here, or you can use the specific tag that the company has provided. So how can we use this new standard column in the standard sheet? Well, if we go over there and see how it was working before, essentially what we were doing is building formulas that had to take account of all these variations. So we were essentially saying, well, if there is sales revenues, then we'll take that. Or if they've got finance services, we'll take that instead, which for a couple of variations is, um, well, it's sort of OK. But when you take into account the fact that, for example, revenues, there are over 40 different tags that you would need to allow for, then the whole thing starts to get very unwieldy and difficult to manage. Coupled with that is the fact that it doesn't just apply to revenues. It applies to an awful lot of the data items where there are variations when you want to take the generic uh, value. So, yeah, the whole thing would just be very, very, very difficult to manage in a consistent and successful manner. With this new standard column, essentially this row here, this row here, and this row here disappear. We only need this revenues uh, line here because we can build a formula which just looks for that standard tag in the standard column. But we've actually belt and braced it a little bit. We've built um, a sort of double formula. So what it does is it looks for the generic figure of revenues in the standard column. And if it doesn't find it there, it will also double check the other column, which has got the tags in the tags that the company has specifically used. Uh, and that's make sure that we, we, we never miss anything. But uh, essentially, you could just work off the standard column if you so desired. Just want to talk to you about a couple of other things relating to the standard column. So we'll go over to the filing two sheet again and have a look at the standard column. And I wanted to talk about the situation where the company itself has used a fairly generic tag to describe an item, which is exactly what has happened with Microsoft. Second line of the income statement, we've got cost of revenue, which obviously matches the uh, description over here, um, as opposed to the more specific sales revenue uh, tag that they've used on the line above. So they've used a generic tag. And what do we do? Well, we use the same generic tag in the standard column, which just means that you can just use the standard column without having to worry about the other tag column, if you so wish. Where the tags differ, we highlight them in a different color. So if we go down the sheet, you will see there are quite a few occasions where we have supplied a generic value as well as the tag the company itself has used. And in fact, if we go down to the next one down, I think it's quite a good example. The company has described goodwill impairment with the correct tag, goodwill impairment loss. But you might want to look at it at a more generic level, just understand how much each company is spending or allowing for restructuring. So we put that more generic higher level tag in as well. Now, I did say right at the beginning, I'd talk a little bit about dates and specifying those in the search tab. So I better do that before we finish. Um, if you go to these boxes here, this is where you specify particular dates for a filing. So, for example, if for Microsoft we wanted to see a filing before 2014, we just specify 2014 and that will automatically change the dates here. As I mentioned before, if it's greyed out, that means that they are automatically calculated. So for each individual filing, you can override the date in these boxes here. So I'm just going to scrub that date there and talk a little bit about this general box over here. Essentially, this is a general date, and this is kind of the default date, which is the latest date, which will apply across all filings. You can override the general date by specifying a date here. So we could say, for example, 2013 over here, dun, 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 
and that will become the general date and applies across all filings and as I said before you can overwrite an individual date by specifying it there. Now you may be wondering what's going on with these dates here because they go down one year at a time and that's because there's another bit of automation going on as well as trying to save you time in having to input various different uh, dates we also thought it would be quite useful if we minimize the number of times you have to keep putting in tickers so what's going on here is if I in fact get rid of these two tickers here and let's say we put Microsoft in here and you will notice the dates will change again um, and um, if you look you'll see that they go down one year at a time and we figured that um, there'll be times when you would just want to download filings for a single company so what we've done is if you just put a ticker in the filing one box then it will automatically download the reports for each successive year if you do a data refresh for all the web queries so basically if you press refresh all it will then download each and every one you can still just download one if you want by going to a particular filing and just uh, uh, clicking refresh for that particular web query so you can do it that way as well but it uh, it should enable you to download uh, lots of filings much much quicker so you don't have to keep putting the ticker in each time and it also automatically s supplies the dates as well so it could save you quite a bit of time so that's what's uh, going on with the dates and with the tickers just trying to automate that a little bit to help you guys out and yeah that's where we are with the latest version with XBRL sheet as it stands um, as uh, I said we want to keep improving this sheet so we'll be adding uh, new features and the stuff already in there we're kind of hinting at which we will build on um, over the next few weeks and months so there'll be more videos to come to show all of that